He started working in the oil fields in Utah probably about 2010 and went to North Dakota in 2011 and then down to Oklahoma. He was an owner-operator truck driver, very independent. He loved to work. He really did. They would give him an assignment to go pick up crude. He would go up and test the oil and then load the crude onto the trailer. He was out by himself all the time. He usually only came home maybe, what, every other month? A yeah. few days. They called me nine o'clock my time and told me they were having problems getting in touch with David, that there was a problem. And then the hospital called me and gave me the bad news. Oil and natural gas extraction workers are no strangers to hard work. The hours can be long, the work can be physically demanding, and often involves travel to remote locations. There are over 500,000 workers employed in the industry, a workforce that is critical to the energy infrastructure of the nation. Some oil and gas production workers are responsible for measuring or gauging how much oil and water is in the storage tanks. These workers often manually gauge the level of fluid by lowering a device into the opening on the top of the tank called a thief hatch. This may be done dozens of times in one day. Oil haulers also collect and test samples of the oil, called thieving, to determine its quality before loading it onto their tanker trucks and transporting the product to a terminal, railhead, or refinery. If done manually, the hauler will lower a tube into the thief hatch and then perform a series of tests on the oil before beginning a fluid or custody transfer. For workers who gauge and thieve the oil, the weather can be severe, the shifts are long, and many work at night and alone. Being away from home is tough in itself. And then you have to deal with all the risks that are involved in, in hauling crude and buying oil. They're out there in all kinds of weather. You've got big heavy equipment. You've got slip hazards. You're up there on a catwalk. But the gas was the main thing that they were worried about. Cindy's husband, David, owned his own truck and had been chasing the oil boom since 2010. On March 20th, 2014, David arrived at a tank site. He climbed the catwalk, opened the thief hatch, was overcome by gas, and soon after was found by another trucker, motionless. He was always very, very careful. I know he was not looking to pass that day. And it just really hurts to think that he was alone. From 2010 to 2014, there were at least nine worker deaths associated with exposure to a mixture of hydrocarbon gas and vapors and insufficient oxygen when the thief hatch was opened. The victims, aged 20 to 63, were found alone, collapsed on the thief hatch or on the tank catwalk or stairs. And here's why. When a thief hatch is opened, large amounts of hydrocarbon gas and vapors can escape, especially if the tank is under pressure. The plume of gas and vapors can surround the worker, and the resulting displacement of air can create an environment that is highly explosive and oxygen deficient. In other words, workers may be breathing, but they're not getting enough oxygen. Here, an infrared camera allows us to see the plume, which is otherwise invisible to workers. It can affect the eyes, lungs, central nervous system, 
and can cause the heart to have abnormal rhythms resulting in dizziness and disorientation, loss of consciousness, and even sudden cardiac death. When you're up there and it hits you, you know, it kind of catches you off guard. You kind of get dizzy. Most of the time when that happens, I just run. But when you try to run, it, it hits you so fast, you get disoriented and don't remember which way you want to run. It becomes very overwhelming. You see where the guy opens the hatch and it's Gas is coming out. These guys are at risk because there's lots of harmful vapors within there. Same as you wouldn't want to hang your head right over top of your, your gas tank when you're fueling your car. There's benzenes, there's toluenes, there's xylenes. There's all kinds of things that can have long-term or immediate effects if you are deprived of oxygen. For a person to be in that kind of risk, there's no, no sense in it, in, in my mind. During 2010 to 2014, were identified to I've been in this industry for 35 years. For I can think back, nobody told us what some of the health effects could possibly be. And I've always vowed that if I ever was in this position, everybody would know what I know. Our goal is to get everybody home safely to their families every day. There are many factors that may increase worker exposure to hydrocarbon gases and vapors, including conditions that are constantly changing. For this reason, everyone should take precautions when on site. The following prevention steps can reduce hazards and save lives. Engineering controls are the most effective way to protect workers by removing hazardous conditions or by placing a barrier between the worker and the hazard. Ideally, it's best if a worker never has to open a thief hatch. Two examples that employers are using include remote or automatic tank gauging systems use a wireless device to indicate how full the tank is. In addition, existing tanks can be retrofit with dedicated sampling ports or taps to replace manual thieving. Sample valves for the tank are located on the ground level. You can actually sample your tank from the outside instead of thieving it from the top. In October 2016, the American Petroleum Institute worked with industry and its partners to develop a new standard that recognizes these and other controls as safe and accurate methods for measuring oil without opening a thief hatch. The Bureau of Land Management has also adopted this new standard into its rules for oil measurement on federal and tribal land. The main goal is to get these guys off the tank where they don't need to be. If that saves one life, that's worth anything in the world to me. That's, that's to me is the ultimate goal. Additional safe work practices and controls include hey John, how's it going? inform designated personnel when you begin and when you finish your work. Hey, I'm over here today. Prior to leaving your vehicle, make sure you don't have anything with you that could spark or ignite flammable gas. Ensure personal multiple or multi-gas monitor is functioning properly, is placed within the breathing zone, and has been properly calibrated and tested. Monitors should be testing for the lower explosive limit and oxygen deficiency in addition to hydrogen sulfide. If multi-gas monitor alarms go off at any time, immediately exit to a safe area. Ground yourself prior to accessing the catwalk by making contact with bare skin on a metal handrail. Bleed off pressure from the tank by opening the main tank bleed off valve, if one is available, and leave it open for the duration of work. Determine wind direction using a wind sock. Stand upwind, open the tank thief hatch fully, and step back at a distance to let it vent. Leave it open while performing gauging tasks. But beware that due to changing wind conditions, this method alone may not keep you safe. 
Unless exposure assessments indicate otherwise, use only supplied air respirators or self-contained breathing apparatus when working around open thief hatches. Half mask, full face, and powered air purifying respirators with organic vapor cartridges will not protect you from these types of toxic exposures and oxygen deficient atmospheres. Wear flame resistant clothing and impermeable gloves. Employers should have written worksite emergency action plans and workers should be trained in and practice emergency response procedures. Worker training is an important part of workplace safety. Employers should conduct hazard assessments to evaluate exposure levels and other hazards and determine necessary controls to protect workers, and communicate these findings in a language that workers understand to both on-site workers and off-site contractors through hazard awareness training. Post hazard signage at tank access points so that workers understand the hazards and the precautions necessary to do this work safely and train workers in these proper work practices. Workers, remember, you have the right to safe working conditions and to receive information and training about workplace hazards. If you don't know or are unsure of the hazards, stop the job and ask. Everyone has the right to stop work that is unsafe. In addition, you can contact OSHA anytime to report unsafe working conditions or to file a complaint. You need to be informed of what all the risks or hazards can be at a site. What's flammable, what's not, what, what can have long-term effects. Just know your limits. Don't get pressured into doing things that you feel uncomfortable doing. Uh, speak up. Say something to someone. Don't wait till it's too late. The family was everything to him. We have our five children, and we've got the grandkids and the wives, and we've got a really special family. They all miss him. At the end of the day, everybody wants to get home safe to their families. Everybody's there to earn their money and everything, but the ultimate goal for everybody is to get home safe to their families and friends. That's the name of the game.